Winter Bells by Penstroke. Chapter 9. Questions of Magic. Nix and Lumberjack's path taken them to a richer part of Canterlot, where smaller homes gave way to extravagant manors. Like fine mares in a heartwarming beauty contest, each home was trying to outshine its neighbors with holiday decoration. There were garland, wreaths, candles, trees, and magical lights that made the manors well brighter than the street lamps. One manor even had carolers who sang as Nix and Lumberjack went by like they had been paid to do so late into the night. It was both beautiful and daunting. Nix's eyes couldn't take it all in fast enough. But that didn't stop her from trying. She learned this way and that while sitting on Lumberjack's back, and as he walked, Jack gladly bragged about how many of the larger trees were ones that he had sold, and which manners were burning wood he had chopped. They passed Celestia's school for gifted unicorns on their way to spell Nexus's home. Huh. There it is. Right there. Gotta love that screenshot. The campus was not well lit or decorated as the homes that surrounded it. But there was a charm in its subtlety. Every lamppost on the campus had a wreath, and several of the trees that grew naturally on the grounds had been decorated, even those that weren't evergreens. There were also students slowly strolling down the paths, mostly couples who had used to chill in the air as an excuse to cling close to one another. Spellnex's home was not far from the university, nor was it hard to spot. It was a dark patch amidst the glowing lights of the homes that surrounded it. There was no decorations outside. The only signs that any pony was home was the lights going from inside a few windows. It was a sight that made Nix's stomach turn sour, and a nibbling urge to forget everything and to go home to twilight to begin forming in her head. She had not seen Spell Nexus since the day she cured him of the blessing. Nix didn't even know what had happened to him. He was a victim as much as any pony else, but he was also the start of it all. He had been the first of the children of Nightmare, and he had been the one to spread the so-called blessing. It had been Spell Nexus who crafted the resurrection spell that gave her a life. You sure this is what you want? Lumberjack asked. Nix licked her lips a moment, but then looked at him and nodded. Yes. Lumberjack returned and nod. He began to walk toward the front door, but as he did, his eyes wandered across the dark manor. It's same, you know. Lumberjack used to sell great big tree to smell Nexus. His house was one of best, and over there! He pointed to a fountain covered in snow. The path that led to the manor's front door circled around it, and as he walked by, Lumberjack couldn't take his eyes off it. Spellnix used to have always great big glowing magic caught above fountain. It was hot, swarming hot, a copy of spell cast by Clover the Clever. It won a finest decorations Lumberjack had ever seen. Don't know why he didn't put it out this year. Nick sank down a little. She had an idea why. It was because of her and the children of Nightmare. The blessing that had gripped him was one of the most pervasive. There had hardly been an inch of his body that wasn't choked with the poisonous magic. What if it had changed him permanently? What if he was still bitter? What if there was still some left? It had taken Nyx all of her strength to beat back that demonic cloud of jealousy and rage once he was queen. If it tried to overtake her now, She'd be unable to defend herself. The whole idea of speaking to Spell was becoming less and less appealing. Nix even opened her mouth to ask Lumberjack if they could, maybe, just go and find Twilight. But she was too late. Lumberjack had reached the door, and with his large hooves, knocked three times. The knocks echoed from the far side of the door, as if the house was empty of all life. Yet, soon, the sound of footsteps began to emanate from the house. The door cracked open, light from inside spilling out to the night. The pony who had come to the door was not Spell Nexus. It was an older unicorn stallion who didn't have a hair out of place. His mane was well trimmed and slipped back, tail properly brushed, and his monocle was crystal clean, just like the monocle that was his cutie mark. Mr. Lumber, 
he said, rolling the words out of his mouth, but he had perfectly formed pearls. As I assured you when you departed yesterday, we do not require a lot of tree. If you have one that you simply cannot sell at your lot, you shall not find a home for it here. Lumberjack laughed. He gently punched the pony at the door in his shoulder. Ah! Proper etiquette! You always make bad jokes! Lumberjack never fails to sell all these trees! Even when I must sell one to save for the Nexus! And why are you here? Proper arrogant question as he adjusted his monocle. Found little snowflake among snowflakes! Jack turned to one side. See what's to see spell Nixos! Proper Erica looked at Nix for a few moments, his face still a perfect mask of composure. Nix had met proper etiquette before. He had come to Ponyville, to Nice Stone Castle, once or twice to bring spell Nexus things from his manor, and news from the occupation at Canterlot. He was a pony she had never seen smile or frown. He was a butler of such skill and experience, so he expected him to be working for the princesses. For several long moments, the trio stood there. With each passing seconds, Nick feared she and Jack would get the door shut in their face. But eventually, Papa Etiquette stepped back and bowed slightly. Please, come in. Jack didn't dwaddle. He stomped into the door, making no effort to wipe his hooves on the doormat before walking into the center of the home's foyer. It was there he and Nix found the only bit of heartwarming decoration to be found in the entire manor. It was a single tree, decorated, but elegantly, with golden ornaments, gentle glowing lights, and a star. Ah! You did her up right you did! Lumberjack said with a smile as he circled the tree. Why? I could not have done it better myself! Well, maybe a little less garden, but very good otherwise. At least some pony else appreciated the effort. Papa Etiquette said, before coming up beside Lumberjack and focusing on Nix, who was still riding on the woodcutter's back. Uh, Miss Moon, Spell Nexus is currently in his study. Shall I show you to him? Y yes. She answered as he carefully hopped from Lumberjack's back. But please, my name is Nix, not Nightmare Moon. Of course, Miss Nix. Now, Miss Lumber. Please feel free to make yourself comfortable here. I do ask, however, that you try to resist the temptation to touch the tree. It does not require any further decoration or a jumper. Popper Agate's scolded cone made Lumberjack quickly pull his hoof back from an ornament and smile innocently, like a colt who had been caught with his nose in a cookie jar. Of course, it is fine tree! I could not make it better if I wanted, even if some ornaments are not hung best way possible. That, Miss Lumber, is a matter of opinion. Now, as to you, Miss Nix, please come with me. What do you want, Etiquette? I'm busy. Yes, the numerous bottles and takeout bags attest to just how busy you've been since the last time you let me in here clean. Soon, you might want to take a brief moment to straighten yourself up, sir. And why is that? We have a guest. I do not want to see any pony. I realize that, sir. Your habits of the last few months have made that perfectly clear. This, however, is one pony I feel you may want to see. I do not want to see any pony. But, sir, I do not want to see any pony. But, there was a clatter of books and glass hitting the door. I do not want to see any pony etiquette. Who in the right mind wants to see me anyway? If it's Princess Alessia again, Tell her my answer is no no. It is not Princess Celestia, sir. It is Miss Nix. The long pause that followed made Nix shift anxiously. She had been left outside to study by proper etiquette. We got inside to speak with Spell Nexus. It hadn't been pleasant discussion from she heard on the far side of the door. But well, still, now everything had fallen silent. Then came a series of hostess moving closer to the door. Next step back, just as proper etiquette came out of the study. He left the door open behind him, and, without even looking in Nixus' direction, began to head back down the hall toward the foyer. Spell Nexus, let's see you now. What? what about you? Nix asked as he wants the butler walk away. 
Spellnexus has asked to see you alone, he answered, before a rustling and laughing came down from the hall, from the direction of the foyer. You'll have to excuse me, but because I must assume Mr. Lambert is not trying to decorate the foyer or repossess the tree. With that, proper etiquette was gone. Stepping quickly to attend to the ruckus Lumberjack was making in the foyer, this left Nix alone and outside the cracked door to the study. She couldn't help but swallow nervously. What's more, the thought of turning back and just going to twilight slipped into her mind, but she pushed it back. She wanted answers. This was where she would get them. So, with her legs feeling like gelatin beside beneath her, she pushed open the door and moved into the study. She didn't know what she expected when she entered the study hall. Spell Nexus had bragged about how he had been the nerve center of the nightmare of children before her resurrection. He had spoken of his books, hidden behind books, and the secret meanings helping within. He had even bragged his study had been the stage of Celestia's greatest folly, when he had convinced her to lead an unsuspecting hoof in her own downfall. One thing was certain, however, she did not expect it to be such a mess. Books that were once neatly filled to cells were in stacks on the floor, being used as tables for dozens of empty glass bottles that dotted the room. The air smelled of rotten fruit and body odor, a smell that was made only worse by the heat coming from the fire in the hearth. In front of that fire, sitting slumped in the back, was Spell Nexus, and he wasn't looking much better than the room. The stallion who had once been the dark-minded leader of the Children of Nightmare now looked like he hadn't been outside in weeks. His eyes were plagued with bags from lack of sleep. His mane now reached down to his shoulders, and his untrimmed bags hid his eyes. His once lean middle had been overtaken by a heavy ponce of a belly, and a pile of empty bottles, takeout boxes, dirty dixes, cluttered the end table beside his chair. Even his tie, Wits had been clinging nakedly to his neck had suffered, laid across the end table, wrinkled and stained like it had been used as a napkin. Spell, Nexus.